and welcome back to our next lesson, 6.5. We've been looking at different forms of equations, so we looked at the slope-intercept form, and now we're going to look at our second one. This one is called the slope-point form of an equation. So in this one, we're going to have to get our slope, and we're going to have to know one point that falls on our line. If we know these two things, we can now use our equation. When we know the slope of a line and one point of the line, we can express the equation of the line in slope point form. It's called slope point form because the slope and the coordinates of one point can be identified from the equation and from the graph. So let's look at an example here. We've got a little graph going on. Nice little line and we clearly have a point right there. So the first thing we need to do is calculate our slope. So for slope, we need a starting point. And again, where does the line cross the corner of a box? It appears to cross it right there. So I'm going to put that as a little dot. And my slope is my rise, which is 2. And my run, which is 3. So my slope is 2 thirds. And now we want to look at the point. What are the coordinates of this point? Of course, first we list the x-coordinate. So we go down from our point to where it crosses the x-axis, and it's 3. And where does it cross the y-axis? crosses at 4. So the point is 3, 4. Slope 2 thirds, point 3 over 4. Now the question is, how do we actually get this into slope intercept form, or rather slope point form. So we're going to start off with this lovely equation here. I hope you recognize it. It's slope. M stands for slope. Y, usually you would see Y2 minus Y1 here. And we normally see X2 minus X1 here. The problem is, from our graph, we were only given this one point. We also know in our equations we have to have the variables of x and y there as well. So instead of pointing the y2, we're just going to put down the y. And instead of pointing the x2, we're going to change to x. So from this particular equation, we are now going to derive slope point form. So my slope, I knew my slope was 2 thirds, so I'm going to get 2 thirds equals y minus the y value of my point. My y value of the point is 4, so it's minus 4. Over x minus the x value of my point, which is 3. So now I'm going to rearrange this formula so all my y information is on the left hand side of my equal sign and everything else is on the right. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to flip all this stuff so that my y's get to the left right away. So I'm going to just flip y minus y1 over x minus x1 equals m. So like I said my y's we're going to get to the left. I'll do that right now. I do the same thing with this equation I'm building for you here. I'm going to take this whole idea on the right, put it on the left. y minus 4 over x minus 3 equals my slope of 2 thirds. Now I want to get the, finally I want to get the x's on the right hand side of the equation. So right now my y is being divided by the x's. So opposite division is multiply. So I'm going to multiply each side by my x minus 1. So I get y minus y1 equals my slope times x minus x1. And there we have our formula for slope point form y minus y1 equals slope times x minus x1. This is the generic starting point for this particular version. 
Let's see what the actual formula looks like. I'm going to bring the x minus 3 to the right-hand side. So y minus 4 equals 2 thirds times x minus 3. And here is the equation of this particular line with this particular point in slope point form. So what you notice is that my slope just simply gets written what my m is, 2 thirds. My point of 3, 4 will be plugged into my equation, but you'll notice I have to flip the signs. This is negative y value. This is negative x value. So even though my point was 3, 4, when I get into my equation, it's negative 4 and negative 3. So this whole section in the middle here is just my thought process. I'm showing you how we get there. In reality, if I was to give you this line, you calculate the slope, you get this point, you take your generic formula, change your slope, change your y, change your x, and you get it in one step. But you have to remember, going into the formula, change signs of your point. Now the same holds true. If I was to give you this formula and ask you to find the point, you'd have to know that these x and the y's change from negatives to positives. So let's look at another example here. Describe the graph of the following function and change to slope intercept form. So I'm asking you to describe it. What I'm really looking for is what's the slope and what is the point. So my slope I can just simply pull directly from my equation. Remember y minus y1 equals slope times x minus x1. So my slope is outside the brackets. My slope is negative 2. Now change that to a fraction to be negative 2 over 1. Same idea. And now the point. Well, I gotta take my x value, which is positive 4, and I've gotta flip the sign. So that becomes negative 4. And then I take my y value, which is negative 3, and I flip the sign to positive 3. So to describe this particular line, it goes through point negative 4, positive 3, and it has a slope of negative 2. Now I want to change this into slope-intercept form. Now I'm going to change to a green marker here. Slope-intercept form, if you remember, has a generic form of y equals mx plus b. So I'm going to manipulate this until I only have a single y, a single x, and a plus b. So the first thing I do when I start here is I need to distribute the negative 2 times each idea inside the brackets. So I get y minus 3 here, because I'm not going to touch anything with that, equals, well, negative 2 times x is negative 2x. Negative 2 times positive 4 is negative 8. Now to get to this form, I've got a b value of negative 8, so that looks pretty good. I've got an x with a letter in front of it, with multiplication. That looks pretty good. But I need to have y all by itself, and I don't have that. I've got y minus 3. So I'm going to bring the minus 3 to the other side. I'm going to plus 3. This leaves me with y equals negative 2x minus 5. So now I've got the y by itself, an x with a coefficient in front of it, and a constant by itself. Remember when we saw describe the equation? We said our slope was negative 2. Well, this equation here has the same slope, negative 2. I'm probably on the right track. Next example. Write the equation of the following graph in both slope-intercept form and slope-point form. So regardless of where I start 
or which form I want to go to first, I need two things. I need a slope and I need a point. So I think the point's a little bit easier because we see the point right down here in our graph. What's the x-coordinate? Negative 3. What's the y-coordinate? Negative 2. Simple. Now for slope. I've got this point that is nicely defined right here. I'm going to choose another point. Well, which point do I want to use to figure out my slope? Again, one that crosses the boxes perfectly. So I'm going to choose this one right here. I could choose any, any spot, but this is a nice one for me. Slope, I'll go the old-fashioned formula. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. My y2, where is this point cross the y-axis? Negative 1 minus my y1. I already know that to be negative 2. Divided by my x2. Where does this point cross my x-axis? Negative 1. Subtract x1, which is negative 3. So negative 1, subtract negative 2. Subtracting a negative, same as adding. A positive. Sorry, I'm just... Sorry, I'm just seeing an error here. This should be positive 1. Right? Cross it, positive 1. So 1 minus negative 2. Subtracting a negative, same as adding. 1 plus 2 is 3. And negative 1. Subtract negative 3. Subtracting a negative, same as adding. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2. So my slope is 3 over 2. So now let's get this into slope point form. I like that one first because I have both slope and point right here. So slope point form. Slope point. Write out my generic formula. y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. So I know my y and my x are going to stay as y and x's. So y minus the y point. The y point was negative 2, so I change that to positive 2. Equals my slope of 3 over 2. Bracket, my x stays the same. And the negative of my x point, negative 3, change to positive 3. So, close my bracket off, and I get y plus 2 equals 3 over 2, x plus 3. Now let's go into slope intercept form. Now there's going to be two ways we're going to be able to do this. So, slope intercept. So the first way is I'm going to show you the generic formula y equals mx plus b. So I know my y and my x are going to stay y and x, and my slope I've already calculated to be 3 over 2. But this idea of b, if you remember, b is where the line crosses the y-axis. So why does, where does it cross the y-axis? Right there. What's that value right there? Well, that value is 2 and a half. So we're going to say 2.5. But we don't, we never like having a decimal when we're working in uh, these forms. So we're going to change this to a fraction. So to change 2 over 5 to a fraction, we're going to put it as 25 over 10, which again would reduce to 5 over 2. You can divide both 25 and 10 by 5, 5 over 2. So now my slope-intercept form, y equals 
3 over 2 x plus 5 over 2, 2 and a half. Now the other option I have is to take my slow point form and manipulate it into this slope intercept form. In that case what I would do is I will write out my formula and first thing I do is distribute this times this, this times this. So y plus 2 stays where it is. 3 over 2 times x is 3 over 2x. Now watch what I do here. 3 and a half, or 3 over 2 times 3. Well, 3 is really like 3 over 1. So when I'm multiplying fractions, I go numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. 3 times 3 is 9, positive 9. And 2 times 1 is 2. 9 over 2. So now all I have to do is bring my positive to the other side, so I'm going to subtract 2, and I'm going to subtract 2, but I know when I'm subtracting fractions, I have to have the same denominator. So 2 is the same as 4 over 2. So I'm going to change, or subtract, 4 over 2. So this will leave me with y equals 3 over 2x, 9 over 2 minus 4 over 2. I'm subtracting fractions. My denominators are the same, so that's good. I'll simply subtract the numerator, which gives me positive 5 over 2. So y equals 3 over 2x plus 5 over 2. And if you notice, at the same equation whichever way I do it. On a test, on an exam, on an assignment, we will either say go from the slope point to slope intercept or go from a slope intercept from a graph. Either way gets you in the same position. Let's go to our textbook now. Let's work on page 372. 2 from the A's, 5 from the B's, 1 from the C's.